Hello everybody, welcome to another Euro Truck Simulator 2 publication. Now, I know that we all like something for free. Hands up, who doesn't like anything that's free? I see you, I see you, I see you, I see that little guy at the back jumping up and down waving both his hands. Yes, I see you mate, you like stuff that's for free. And I'll tell you what's for free, a subscription to this channel. It's free, it's easy, all you have to do is press the red subscribe button. So, where are we going today, I hear you ask? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you. We're currently sat at DHL in Dijon, near where we finished our last job. And we're going to be taking this industrial condenser on a special transport into Switzerland to Geneva to Feig. It's a total journey of around 141 miles, which means, well, it's a special transport, so I won't be going any faster than 30 anyway. The journey is going to take us around three and a half to four hours. So let's uh, get on with the trip and let's get moving. Now, as you may have already noticed on the early parts of this trip, that with it being a special transport, I'm not exempt to the law, but I can cut some corners, which means that I've got a lead convoy, I've got a convoy at the back, uh, the police will stop traffic, I can go through red lights, and I do have right away because it's an exceptional, it's a exceptional size. As you may notice later on in the video that the lead convoy will sometimes move out to the middle of the road to push other traffic away from me on single carriageways. YouTube Radio Twist your dial to 87.3 for more top tunes and coming up next is Dr. Heartbeat's Heartbreakers Hour.
is for all you drivers out there on the long and lonesome road. It is Steve Adams with Highway One. You are listening to Dr. Heartbeat's Heartbreakers Hour on YouTube Radio 87.3. Next up is by the Westerlies and Best Horizon Gone. took me back to my childhood in the mining village where I used to live and we used to go and watch the brass bands play when my mother and father now it seems that football violence and hooliganism has raised its ugly head again with this rather disturbing report it's Trent Rockman yes thank you for that Dr. Hartwig it seems that the ugly head of hooliganism has raised again following England's latest defeat to Belgium. An unsavory incident occurred at a leading supermarket in the city centre in Belgium. The manager Jean-Luc Demer has reported that he was stacking some milk and chocolate when he saw a man in an England shirt browsing the shelves opposite. He didn't think anything at first, but he thought it was particularly strange when he just stood there, his face was turning almost as red as his top, breathing slowly and gritting his teeth. Before he knew it, he was punching a bag of fine line 30% less fat on bran crisp as if he was in a trance. He just kept punching and punching until he was shattered into tiny pieces. 
He then kissed the cross of the Saint George and slowly walked out screaming, Yes, yes! Jean Luc Demer told us he desperately tried to revive the fallen savory snack, primping the bag and hoping to make it fit for resale. I'm just wondering if he gave it the kiss of life as well, but it was completely destroyed. In a statement, the Minister of the National Police, Bernard Kazinov, said this is a very shocking and disturbing incident. Unfortunately, we were unable to arrest the suspect as he was too organised and our officers didn't materialise in sufficient time. However, I can assure the Belgian people that food crime would not be tolerated in any shape or capacity, not now, not ever. Twitter user Yap Boy claimed responsibility for the incident and told us, and I quote, that this was a victory for all Englishmen and women everywhere. When I came to Belgium, I felt a bit peckish. I didn't get anything in the football ground because it was too expensive, so I went to the local shop. I was very angry at the 2 nil loss that we had suffered, so I was proudly wearing my England top. I spent 20 minutes in the supermarket and these weird crisp brands were everywhere. I wasn't going to eat any of that foreign muck and I became very upset and angry. All I could think of was how Gary Lineker would feel coming in here. Gary Lineker is the major spokesman for Walker's Crisp and he would not put up with eating this foreign junk. When we approached the app boy, he was swigging two cans of Boddington's, one in each hand. We asked him for his thoughts. He refused to see us and refused to give us any statements. Now this is a very, very, very sad occasion for English football and for all you crisp lovers out there. We don't condone this type of violence and we ask people when in foreign supermarkets to respect their crisp choice and their branding. We also contacted the BBC to ask for Gary Lineker's thoughts on this mayhem in this Belgian supermarket. Mr Lineker, the big eared multi-millionaire refused to comment but he did leave us a laughing emoji thank you Trent for that report very disturbing news indeed next up is by Dan Lebovitz and don't you bite now <laughs> I'm still chuckling at that report. Uh, I have to, I have to leave it and listen to that report. Oh, how stupid is that? Attacking a bag of crisp, eh? Just because England lost. How daft is it? How daft can some people be? They're just head cases. You pay all that money, go over there, watch game of football, and because he's upset at the result, he goes and smacks a bag of crisp about. Stupid. But there you go. Just remember, if you like what you've seen, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification, leave me a thumbs up, the YouTube will love me for it, and until next time, I'll see you, bye bye.